tonight's RPM, we're going into the forests of County Antrim of the Town Parks Rally to decide who has won the 1992 Maxall Northern Ireland Rally Championship. Outside the Town Park showrooms on the outskirts of Antrim, there is an unusually large crowd for a Saturday morning. The Mid Antrim Motor Club are hosting the final round of the Maxall Northern Ireland Rally Championship and with three drivers still in contention, the atmosphere is electric. Mervyn Hill, you're really going to have to put the hammer down today. Competition is going to be very, very tough at the top today. Uh, local competition from Derek, from Stevie Emerson, really good. Steve Mahoney, a lot of boys at the top, going to go hard today. It's all to do. Now you've been a champion for the last two years, it's not just going to be quite so easy this year to retain it. Absolutely not, it's not over this year, we've all been chatting who's going to be champion, who's going to win. It's a three man race and it's going to be decided probably in the last stage of today. Maybe even we'll have to wait on the official results and even then it could be a tie break situation so certainly the championship's not over yet. Stephen Emerson, big day for you. Yep, sure is, this is the, the big one alright. The pressure is definitely on. For the first time this year, I'm really feeling it. This morning, I didn't know whether to come or go. And it, was, it was really heavy going now, and it's, and it's remaining that way at the moment. So what's the plan? I don't really know, and that's the truth, until I hit the first stage. It just depends on what way I feel as soon as I hit the first stage. It's all right having a plan, saying you're going to just take it easy, but first stage you might just put the horns on and decide to go for it. So if I'm lying in the trees, you'll know I put the horns on. <laughs> as far as we're concerned, the championship can only be decided if Mervyn or Stephen really make a mistake, so there's nothing we can do but go out and try and win the rally. But I never knew a McGarrity that didn't go for it. I'll be trying. <laughs> But there are others who could upset the three contenders' plans. Somebody like James Lecky. Generally, off horse conditions will suit the four-wheel drive. Uh, you're gaining about three seconds off the start anyway um, by having the additional traction. But uh, yeah, I believe the conditions will suit it very well. Well, you're a name that's really sort of leapt to prominence recently. You've been doing very well in the English forests. Yeah, well, I think the choice was there. The competition here is very tough. And there was only three rounds left, and I wanted to do some more English events next year. Um, and for two reasons we went across. One, we've been selective events and getting good results, and therefore making a name, but also uh, we wanted to try and go across next year, maybe the mint text, the Scottish rounds. And we didn't want to arrive at the first round with a seating in the 90s. So got to try and get a result in before the end of the season and improve that. James Leckie may be a personality of the future, but a famous and seasoned personality is hitching a ride on Sammy Wilson's car, along with another furry friend. Could there be a picnic in the woods today? Stage one was a mere one mile in length, but this is much more of a challenge. As Stephen gets to work in his two-wheel drive Manta, note there are no pace notes, they're not allowed. Ahead on the road, the defending champion Mervyn Hill in his four-wheel drive Mazda. He opens the action in fine style. Mervyn completes the test in 2 minutes 32 seconds. Quite a target for the following cars, but behind him in Tardry Forest, Emerson is flying. Ahead are the notorious Carnerny jumps. Safely over them, it's down to our first camera point. Stephen is determined that two-wheel drive isn't going to be a handicap as he wrestles with the Windrum's Manta in his chase for the championship. It's an impressive opening as he's one second quicker than Hill over the first two stages. But Derek McGarrity is even quicker. Derek has made a sensational start, taking fastest times on both stages and a four second lead in the rally. Garth McCartney has a Manta 400, as has Stephen McWinney, who sets sixth fastest time on this stage. But James Leckie is the real dark horse. 
He was second quickest on stage one and fourth fastest here. But for entertainment, it's hard to beat the old Mark II, especially with someone like Philip Young on the accelerator pedal. Ian Johnson's escort is equally entertaining. Joshua Semple is out again in the two-wheel drive Peugeot and on maximum attack with Robbie Philcott enjoying a very different weekend to his normal duties with Kenny McKinstry. Ian Rock gives it everything in the little rear-wheel drive Fiesta and scares our cameraman in the process. But Norman Moore has a terrible start to the day and coasts his Chevette to the end of the stage. Heading into the sun near Slemish Mountain and Emerson is in trouble! He ditched the Manta but he kept the foot in it to recover. It's a tricky stage with a very tricky finish as Mervyn Hill discovers. Emerson arrives after a highly adventurous stage. They've certainly lost time, but not too much. Really, all you can do is laugh about it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have about half a mile on <laughs> Those smiles are about to be wiped off their faces as here comes McGarrity. Derek, who said second fastest time at this stage, gets caught out by the turbo boost which lights up the car as it approaches the finish line. It catches out the Sierra crew, Emerson and nearly Ronnie McCartney as spectator. Necky is three seconds quicker than anyone here in the village home's car. It would seem that a new star is emerging on the Irish rally stages. Andy McGee leaps into view and his time, as you would expect, is inside the top ten. And Ian Rock is attacking our cameraman again. Both survive. As has Norman Moore, whose Chevette is now fired up on all four again. But stage five has definitely taken its toll. George Cameron's front end is in tatters. But Stanley Pinkerton has really been in the wars. What a way to treat a venerable Avenger. Ken Moore comes closest to visiting the masonry. And there's few of those boys who would win a ploughing championship. And now for the real thing, 6.4 miles through Glenarm Forest, where the slightest mistake can mean disaster. There are trees, drops, log piles and bridges, and yet Stephen heads into the unknown at frightening speeds, with no notes to help him. driver Trevor Bryans has to help is the roadbook provided by the organizers but that only warns of the extremely dangerous sections and makes no mention of places like this. Or this. Right, 
are along the base of the valley, the road really opens out. The surface now is concrete, but on the narrow forestry tyres, there's very little drip. been a triumph for Stephen Emerson and Trevor Bryan. They're 19 seconds quicker than McGarrity and 17 in front of Hill. For a two-wheel drive car it's outstanding, but he'll learn later that he's not the fastest. At the shedding service nobody's quite sure who's in the lead and the battle scars on the cars are evidence of how hard people have been trying. Marvin, who's leading? Very difficult to say at this stage, but going by what's happening so far, it's either Stevie Emerson or James Leckie. James has been the surprise of the rally so far. Uh, Stephen Emerson took a pile of time out of Derek McGarry and myself in the Glenarm stage. He took 17 of me and 19 of Derek. And uh, I don't know where he got the time. He must have drove brains out just all the way through the stage. We believe you've just done a phenomenal time there down in Glenarm. It was a lot of fun, yeah. I enjoyed it, but I thought in a couple of places it should have been up a gear or two, but maybe that wouldn't have been a wise thing to do. <laughs> Mervyn's scratching his head. He doesn't know where you've got that time from. Well, Jimmy Mills throughout the week told me that Glenarm wouldn't be as big an advantage for four-wheel drive over it, and I took it with a pinch of salt, but I'm beginning to believe him now. See, the car's not steering the way it should be now. I think the control arm's slightly bent, but sort of adapted to suit it now. I'm just going to have to drive it, but I think it'll still be okay. How do you think you're doing overall? We're either first or second. Uh, we were quickest in the last stage. Stevie had a fantastic time in Glen Arm, which I think leaves him about six or seven seconds in front. I'm not sure. That last stage was particularly slippery, and uh, again, there was a bit of fast tarmac at the end. Both, both of us will suit the car. One in the four-wheel drive and the slippery stuff, and then it's group end, so it has additional speed at top end, so the tarmac bit was very quick. Well, you're almost certainly in the top three, I think, are you? We're leading by 17 seconds. <laughs> yes, at the minute. Right. <laughs> that's well into the top three. <laughs> that, that's particularly well into the top three, yes. We're pleased about that. After service, it's back to the woods, to Glenarm, at the Town Parks Rally. James Leckie and George Miller, the new leaders, blaze the trail for the championship contenders. It's hard to believe that James has done less than half a dozen rallies in the village homes Cosmouth. The Hillsborough driver's leap to prominence is causing considerable confusion amongst the championship regulars. Particularly Stephen Emerson, who requires a win today, or at least a place well clear of McGarity and Hill to take the title. Stevie is now 17 seconds behind the Cosworth and just 5 seconds ahead of Derek McGarity in what is proving to be a brilliant drive in the Windrum's Manta. But it's not without its moments. Square left, we found yard square right. Straight through the arch. Straight ahead. Derek McGarrity and Ian Besant in their now not so pretty 4x4 Cosworth are a comfortable third. And Emerson is very much on their sights as they will draw level by the end of this stage. Philip Young in the escort hired from Kenny McKinstry is fourth and he'll end the day in fifth position. And Andy McGee is flying in his own Mark II escort. He's currently in fifth place but he'll drop to seventh by the end of the rally. But he still has the consolation of a class win. Mervyn Hill is currently not a happy man. 
and he and his co-driver are seeing the championship slipping away from them. At the moment, the Mazda is back in sixth place, but the double champions don't give up that easily. They'll take two faster stage times before the finish and haul themselves back up to fourth place. Garth McCartney is also on a charge, which will bring him and the series coordinator, Gavin Campbell, up three places to sixth by the finish. Stephen McWinnie will slip from seventh to eighth as the day progresses in his Manta 400. Ian Rock has a couple of young fans and no wonder as he has his rear-wheel drive Fiesta up to ninth overall and will win his class after a very energetic drive, which came very close to the edge at times. But not as close as George Robinson, who competes in a borrowed escort. Sammy Wilson takes Santa and his furry friend to a class win. Though how you can see anything through those stickers beats me. And Dominic McNeil is another class winner in the Peugeot 309. Glenarm has really been the town park's rally, but there are still five tests on the way back to Antrim. James Leckie roars off the final of these in the sure knowledge that he's won his first rally. Looks like you got it, James. Uh, it looks very like it, yes. Uh, a very enjoyable run, very enjoyable run, very surprising. Uh, it's all flex to that guy there. The, uh, the car's gone fantastically all day. Not a, not a misbeat, not a misfire, nothing. And George has navigated superbly. It's, it's been a good trip. Well, we know that James and George have won the rally, but who's won the Maxwell Championship? That's one that Gavin Campbell will have to sort out. Taking into account drop scores, Derek McGarity finishes the championship on 69 points, and Mervyn and Stephen both finish on 70 points. However, <laughs> during the season, Stephen took maximum points on two occasions, Mervyn took maximum points on two occasions, Stephen took second maximum points on one occasion, and Mervyn took second points on two occasions. Therefore, on the second count back, Mervyn is the champion. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Marvin, congratulations, uh, but I mean, it couldn't have come closer, could it? Very, very close. We knew from we started today it was going to go probably to the last stage, and before the rally started, said Gavin would probably have to tell us who had won, and he's worked it out, and yes, a close battle. Um, in the Moss three times today didn't help. The speed that they were going at and the span on their work, James Lecky, I don't know where he was getting the times from. Somebody to look out for next year, certainly. But uh, yeah, very pleased to, to tie it up the third year in a row. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed the championship regardless. Uh, I was actually surprised that we were able to be as close as we were today to the four-wheel drive So I don't know whether it was by accident or otherwise, but at the end of the day it was just too much to contend with. But I really enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed it. So the champagne goes to Mervyn Hill for the third year running. Commiserations to Stephen Emerson, but his co-driver, Trevor Brand, won the Navigator's Prize. They'll all have to look out because James Leckie is now on the scene.